We have come to check this refrigerator, which has stopped cooling after the electrical surge. So let's check it and will I able to repair it. The display of the refrigerator is not turning on. The owner complained, which I told you at the start of the video. First, let me show you a mistake on the backside of the refrigerator. It is a big mistake. Never make this mistake with your refrigerator. Originally a 3-pin plug is installed with the refrigerator. But in this refrigerator, a 2-pin plug adapter was used with 3-pin plug. I have cut the 3-pin plug wire because this plug has a problem with it. The neutral side of the plug pin has been busted. The pin has short-circuited and is moving from its place. Due to this, I think the PCB of this refrigerator has been faulty for the second time. But the technicians who visited here before didn't see it. Now we have temporarily plugged in the refrigerator with the proper polarity. A box on the back side of the refrigerator is installed, with the control board inside. Other than this, the control board controls the compressor. Now I will remove the control board of this refrigerator from the box. First, I will check whether the PCB board's fuse has burned. As its electrical plug pin was damaged so it could also have caused the issue. This is the control board of this refrigerator. I have checked the fuse of the control board, and it is fine. Now I will take it to the workshop. The compressor of this refrigerator is 220 volts. Our 134A refrigerant is charged in it. And these are the specification of the refrigerator. Now I have brought the control board to the workshop. Now I will check, test, and repair it. To make the display and the other functions of the refrigerator start working. First, let's understand this PCB, how it functions, and what components are installed on this PCB board. First of all, I am checking the input and the output pins. The neutral and the line pins are written on the connector. The first pin is for the neutral on the connector. The second pin is for the line. The third pin is for the compressor, and a blue color relay is installed on the PCB board. This blue colored relay is installed to start the compressor. But it starts after a few seconds. Then five more relays are installed with it. These relays are for different functions. A heater and the other two pins are for the two valves. The valves control the refrigerant flow. A ZNR is installed. It is a protection device that controls the overvoltages in the PCB board. If the voltages pass higher than the capacity of the PCB board, the ZNR short circuits and the fuse blow in the PCB. And thus, the rest of the motherboard stays safe through this. After the fuse, a capacitor and a line filter are installed. Let me show you the back side of the PCB board. The electricity comes at this point, then goes towards the fuse. Then it flows toward the line filter. The purpose of the capacitor and the line filter is to control any spikes coming from the electricity and to pass filtered electricity to the rest of the PCB. The next part is the rectification system. Four diodes are joined together to make a rectifier that converts AC to DC electricity. If any of these diodes get faulty, the fuse will still blow. Also, the safety breaker in your house trips. After these diodes, the NTC sensor is installed. The NTC sensor work is also to protect the PCB board. It is installed in series on the PCB board. When the first time we pass the electricity to the PCB, it experiences high current flow. At that point, the NTC sensor limits the current flow, and the PCB board will get safe. Due to the current flow in the PCB, the NTC sensor heats up, and thus the resistance of the NTC sensor decreases, making the flow of the current higher. When we cut off the electricity from the PCB, the NTC returns to normal temperature, and again NTC sensor is ready to behave like a current limiting device. A capacitor, a switching IC, and the DC chopper are installed forward. Through switching IC, it controls voltage and current. Here a TNY276PN numbered IC is installed. When I check this PCB physically, I can see that this capacitor has blown up but is not visible in the camera. But I can clearly see it that the capacitor is blown up. Moreover, when I rechecked this switching IC, I could see very clearly, it is physically bursted, and I can see a clear departed line on the IC. High fluctuation of voltage and current has caused this damage. 
Now I will check whether the DC chopper has gotten bad because that has also turned black. When I zoom in on the camera, I can see the black spots on the DC chopper. Let's see if it is faulty or not. I will change all the parts that are faulty in this PCB. And after changing them, let's see whether the PCB turns on. Now I have changed the capacitor in the switching IC. I have installed the switching IC of the same number. The capacitor is of 22 microfarads and 450 volts. Now let's check whether the PCB works now or not. So what will be the method of checking this PCB, as we don't have the display of this PCB board? I will check it manually. Now I have passed electricity to the PCB. It has an LED light installed in it, but it is not glowing. We don't know whether this PCB is working or not. For that, I will check the voltages in the PCB. I will check the voltages first on its bridge rectifier. I am checking the DC voltages on these points of the diodes. The multimeter is showing 317 DC volts, which is okay. Now I will check the voltages of the capacitor I had changed earlier. The multimeter is showing 317 DC volts, which is okay. After this, I will now check the switching IC. The four pins on the left side of the switching IC are all source pins. Pin 4 of this IC is the drain pin. I will check how many volts we get on its drain and source. It drains an DC chopper pin that I will show you now. See this last pin of the DC chopper and the first pin of the IC. We should get 317 volts here. And if we are getting these voltages here, this means that the PCB is perfectly fine, but if it still not works, then I will check the low side of the PCB. This is E102 numbered capacitor. We should get 5 volts on this capacitor. The other capacitor is E101. We should get 12 volts on this one. This means that the PCB is perfectly fine now. I hear the relay voice when I turn on the PCB. But for your help and to assure you, how many volts are we getting? I will check the DC voltages. This is capacitor E102. The multimeter is showing us 5 volts here. Now I am checking the voltages on the E102 capacitor. The multimeter is showing 12 volts on this one. This means it will work. Other than this, I am checking the compressor relay on AC voltages. We are getting 220 volts on the relay, which will start the compressor. Now let's go to the site and check whether the PCB works. Now I have come to the refrigerator site. I am installing the PCB in the refrigerator. I will fit all the connectors appropriately. To have no issue. I am connecting the display and the sensors connector in the PCB, and now I am tightening the screw. The owner told me that he would fit a plug with the wire of the refrigerator and told me just to test it. Now I have switched on the button. The display of the refrigerator has started to work. It has started showing the freezer temperature but F1 on the fridge temperature. As soon the fridge cools, the F1 will stop displaying. The compressor has started. The discharge pipe is heating up, and the pipes upward on the condenser are also heating. This means this refrigerator has been fixed. Click on the left or right thumbnail on the screen to watch our next videos. And subscribe. It's free. Thank you.